Hello, thanks for watching this episode of Lessons on Galatians. I'm Pastor Mike Seifert from Living Hope Lutheran Church in Midlothian, Virginia. In this lesson, we're going to further contextualize Paul's letter by identifying its recipients. This one's not too hard. Paul says at the very beginning, to the churches in Galatia. He's writing to Christian congregations in Galatia. Galatia was a Roman province in what is today central Turkey. As the crow flies about 100, oh, sorry, 450 miles from Jerusalem. We'll zoom in a bit so we can better see its boundaries and major cities. Paul is writing to Christian congregations somewhere in this area. Now there's more in the letter that helps us to narrow this down a bit. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 13. He says, as you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. Even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God, as if I were Christ Jesus himself. This verse reveals that Paul knows these people. He had preached the gospel to them, and they received it with faith. Verse 19, with its imagery of children and childbirth, implies that Paul's preaching among them was the first time they heard the gospel, and so Paul was a sort of mother to them in the faith. Now that we've determined that Paul knows them, now we're able to get even more detail from this map. Paul spent most of his first missionary journey in Galatia, and he founded Christian congregations in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. This was a, a there and back trip. This is all recorded in Acts chapter 13 and 14. Uh, so let's take a quick look there. Okay. We can see that Barnabas accompanied Paul on this trip. You want to file that fact in your memory for later. It'll be important. After some time on the island of Cyprus, Paul and Barnabas went to Pisidian Antioch in Galatia. We're told of two times that Paul preached in the synagogue, and he had mixed results. Some fierce opposition developed from among the Jews, so that Paul announced that they would now take the gospel to the Gentiles. The gospel spread in that region, but Paul and Barnabas were finally forced to leave because of Jewish persecution. The reaction was similar in Iconium. Many believed, but again, there was fierce opposition from a Jewish contingent and a plot from among both Jews and Gentiles to stone them, which resulted in their being forced to flee. In Lystra and Derby, their preaching was cut short by Jews who followed them from the first two cities in order to turn the Gentiles in, um, in Lystra and Derby against them. This time, Paul was actually stoned and left for dead. From what we're told in Acts, it sounds like Paul and Bar Barnabas' preaching was more successful among Gentiles, who were non-Jews, than it was among Jews. Upon their return from the journey, they reported all that God had done through them and how he opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So in any case, we can, uh, we can well imagine growing pockets of Christians around these four cities in Galatia. Is there any more we can identify about Paul's audience from the letter itself? I would point yet to chapter 4, verse 8. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who were by nature, who are by nature not gods. He describes his audience as having a pagan past. That kind of reminds us of the people in Lystra who thought that Paul and Barnabas were the Greek gods, Hermes and Zeus, and tried to make sacrifices to them. So all that indicates that Paul is writing to a formerly pagan Christian Gentile audience in or around the congregations he had founded on his first missionary journey in the Roman province of Galatia. Now, how does that help us to understand the letter? because these formerly pagan Gentile Christians aren't the only group of people mentioned in the letter. 
As we read, we can see another group lurking in the shadows, a group that was undermining Paul's work and the Galatians' faith by preaching what Paul calls a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. We'll call this group the rivals, and they will be the focus of our next lesson.